It's Wednesday morning. Welcome to morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image. And in these last days, you have spoken to us in your son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 77 I cry aloud to God. I cry aloud to God and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. By night my hand is stretched out and does not tire. My soul refuses comfort. I think upon God and I groan. I ponder and my spirit faints. You will not let my eyelids close. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old. I remember the years long past. I commune with my heart in the night. My spirit searches for understanding. Will the Lord cast us off forever? Will he no more show us his favour? Has his loving mercy clean gone forever? Has his promise come to an end for evermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he shut up his compassion in displeasure? And I said, my grief is this, that the right hand of the Most High has lost his strength. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind the wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your works and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy who is so great a God as our God. You are the God who worked wonders and declared your power among the peoples. With a mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God, the waters saw you and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered, your arrows flashed on every side. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the ground. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths in the great waters, but your footsteps were not known. You led your people like sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. The canticle is a song of the word of the Lord. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 23, beginning at verse 12. In the morning, the Jews joined in a conspiracy and bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 who joined in this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food until we have killed Paul. Now then, you and the council must notify the tribune to bring him down to you on the pretext that you want to make a more thorough examination of his case, and we are ready to do away with him before he arrives. Now the son of Paul's sister heard about the ambush, so he went and gained entrance to the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to report to him. So he took him, brought him to the tribune and said, The prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to tell you. The tribune took him by the hand, drew him aside privately and asked, What is it that you have to report to me? He answered, The Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire more thoroughly into his case. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than 40 of their men are lying in ambush for him. They have bound themselves by an oath, neither to eat nor drink until they kill him. They are ready now and are waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, ordering him, Tell no one that you have informed me of this. Then he summoned two of the centurions and said, Get ready to leave by nine o'clock tonight for Caesarea with 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride. Take him safely to Felix the governor. He wrote a letter to this effect. Claudius Lystus, to His Excellency the Governor Felix. Greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and about to be killed by them. But when I learned that he was a Roman citizen, I came with the guard and rescued him, since I wanted to know the charge for which they accused him. I had him brought to their council. I found that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but this was charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. When I was informed that there was a, would be a plot against the man, I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers also to state before you what they had against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him during the night to Antipatris. The next day they let the horsemen go on with him while they returned to the barracks. When they came to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province he belonged to, and when he learned that he was from Sicilia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive. Then he ordered that he be kept under guard in Herod's headquarters. Here ends the reading. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by your right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. A Song of Redemption Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The Father has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. 
All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. In him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him God was pleased to reconcile all things. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And so we pray. Almighty God, we pray this morning for the stories making news headlines from around our world. Father, we pray today for those areas that are struggling with violence and unrest. Spirit of peace, we ask that you would pull through the streets and the towns of those places that are currently at war. But most of all, Father, we pray that you would inspire the hearts of the leaders of those nations, that they may desire peace and that they may work to seek the common good. Father, at home, we pray for our social services and all whom they will help today. We pray for those who work in the criminal justice system and for the victims and perpetrators of crime. Father, we pray for the work of aid agencies in our own country and around the world. Praying especially for those who are working in difficult and violent areas. And Father, we pray for those whose home is not a safe place to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.